Hey, it's Coach Colette, and I'm so excited to announce the launch of a new segment on the Start Within podcast. It's called Let's Talk. So as you might guess, Let's Talk is a conversation. It's a candid conversation. It's a candid conversation about real topics, real issues that are happening in our world today. And what I'm doing is having conversations with others in my network. So on this launch premiere Let's Talk episode, I am actually having a great candid conversation with my Start Within team. So you'll get to meet my summer interns and hear from them. So what are we talking about? We're talking about putting yourself first. You know, Socrates had two suggestions for us, care for oneself and know oneself. And really that's at the heart of my Start Within philosophy. So on this episode of Let's Talk, we talk about how to clarify and then communicate your priorities with others and also how you can prioritize yourself while still maintaining your relationships. Ooh, tricky stuff. So I hope that you will be educated, informed, challenged, inspired, motivated by this episode of Let's Talk. So get ready and listen up. Today we have the interns at Star Within Coaching here to have a candid chat with Coach Colette about priorities and balance within our work and social lives. I'm Candice. I'm Samaya. I'm Wendy. And so to start us off, so Coach Colette, how do you communicate or share priorities and intentions with others? Mm, that's a really good question. And I would say that it's two different things, right? So priorities are how do you communicate what's important to you? So you need to first be able to understand what's important to you, right? So you need to know what do I value? What do I think is important? And then being able to give yourself permission to share that with others. And also, I guess, and sometimes it can take courage and we can talk about that, like being able to share your priorities with other people for some, sometimes it can come easily or sometimes it can be difficult. I think for me, I have no challenge on the business side, right? Being able to share like what's important, the mission of my business, really wanting to help women, to help empower women, um, to really change what the definition of mental health is in communities of color. On the personal side, sometimes it can get a little bit tricky about sharing priorities. Um, and at that same time, maintaining boundaries, right? So if I wanna go somewhere, or I don't want to go somewhere, right? And I'm trying to make plans with a friend, right? How do we sort of come to that agreement together? So I think, at least for me, in my experience, I noticed that there can be challenges on the personal side because if we have feelings for someone, like if it's a partner or a family member, we want to make sure like, oh, we're not making them feel badly. Yet at the same time, the more you do that, sometimes it can create more resentment because you feel like I haven't communicated what I need. I haven't communicated what I want to do. And I've always kind of given the other person the opportunity to do whatever they want. And, and I think that, I don't know, I'm curious to know what you all think about that. I agree with you in the sense of it can be difficult once it comes to um, your personal life. For me, personally, I prioritize people's happiness and making them comfortable as like much as they could be. And so whenever like plans are made and everything, it's kind of like, okay, like what do you want to do? Like What will make you happy? Is this how you want to go about your day? Like I'm very flexible. I'm very open to do whatever you want to do. So therefore, I feel like I kind of put my needs on like the back burner and I don't really realize how much that burns me out until like I had that moment where it's like, OK, like I'm burned out and I'm crashing now and I don't know why I'm feeling this way. I find it interesting that you said that because when you like try to make plans with similar people, like people with the same kind of like um, moral value as you like 
thinking how you can prioritize other people. You kind of have this back and forth really often because sometimes like I, when I make plans with people, it's like this indecisiveness because both of us, like, what do you want to do? And then they ask me, what do I want to do? I'm like, well, I want to know what you want to do. So then it's like a lot of back and forth and then it just like leads into this, like someone has to like put their foot down and then realize like, you know, if I come up with something, we're both going to like it equally. So then it's like, it's really interesting when you're trying to make plans with people who are very similar to you. Yeah, I definitely relate to that because um, a lot of times there's like my friends back in college, we have one friend that always knows what they want to do. And that's really helpful for us because two, two of us, like out of us three are really like, we don't really mind just like spending together in itself. Like it's fine. Like if you want to do something, let's go do that. But then on the other hand, sometimes it's hard when like, because I want to try and like, prioritize make sure you do what you want to do but sometimes it's also like it gets to a point where one day I really as an introvert person I need like the time for myself but since up until now I've always been like yeah okay if you want to do that let's go do that it becomes it comes to a point where like oh is it awkward at this point to say no I don't really want to do that or be like hey, can I just skip out? Because up until now, I've always been like, yeah, sure, let's do that. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, okay. It's kind of like, how do I set it? Because it feels for me, like, suddenly, like, am I acting different? Will they be thrown off by that? Mm -hmm. I never really know how to balance that part out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's interesting what what each of you said, because now you're, like, you talked about burnout. And I think that that is one of the challenges of not fully expressing our needs and our desires and our wants because all of that repressing and being like, okay, whatever you want, whatever you want, right? After a while, it's kind of like, oh my God, no, (laughs) it starts to bubble up. Um, And also, Wendy, I thought was interesting when you said people with similar priorities or values, right? So there are, are times where when we have to or we get to be around people who have different priorities, then you have to figure out it's more of a negotiation because it's like, all right, like even when you were saying that, like back and forth, back and forth. So like, I'm kind of like, I like to make decisions based on time. And so it's like, oh my God, like if we have to, if we, if we have to negotiate five times, what do you want? What do you want? Like that would drive me insane. So it's just kind of interesting, the sense of when we have similar priorities, right, then there can be the flow, but then there also can be the stall of like, okay, who's going to be the one that's going to say, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, and I think it is, and I think, and working with women, I think is also interesting. Like, I I wonder sometimes if, if it is that women have more of a challenge with this from sort of like traditional standpoints of being, you know, conditioned around nurturing, although we know that priorities, um, you know, when we talk about even the prices assessment, that that is not gender-based. But it is interesting to think about, and I'm curious what your thoughts are like on, from a male-female standpoint, do you see any differences in terms of being able to express priorities or boundaries? I feel like it's easier for men to sit here and kind of stand their ground and say what they want and express like the needs and like wants that they have and like what they expect like out of it versus women are kind of like we kind of get lost in our mind where it's just like let me overthink this let me do this and like you kind of just like rerun it in your mind like multiple times and then it's kind of like because you at least like for me personally like with the privacy assessment, I realized, like, I prioritize my relationships, and so, therefore, like, my answer, or, like, me stating, like, my wants and needs, it's, like, is this going to hurt this person if I state something that, like, isn't really necessarily, like, on the same, like, wavelength as that, Mm -hmm. and so then, like, I'm very much catering to other people's, like, emotions versus, like, my own. I think it's also, like, one thing I think of is definitely agree with like men are I find personally like, from experience that like they have no problem kind of stating what they want or like their priority put their foot first and let people know that like that's where they stand but also I feel like a lot of times women kind of are better at the boundary part but sometimes to a disadvantage where they will actually set the boundary that they think is necessary or needed or like appropriate for them first which may actually sometimes be limiting because they think that that's where their boundary lies for them like oh this is a acceptable boundary within the workplace and like good at keeping that boundary 
but also sometimes like sometimes men will be willing to just leap over that boundary even if it might be kind of set there which sometimes is actually may show that like oh you really want that and like sometimes it's necessary but sometimes I find like women like if there's that boundary that they've set or other people set they're very good at keeping it but sometimes it can be to a disadvantage just because like women have been kind of felt that oh I can't really cross that line or I need to kind of make it make reach a point where it's okay for me to kind of toe that boundary a bit more talking about like men and women like speaking up made me think about like my college class um, so one of my like economics class is a very seminar discussion based class and then the first day I went in there I just noticed immediately that like the guys in the class outnumber the girls by like a ton of no- like it's a big number and um, every- th- this class had like this reputation of being really tough because it's like if you don't speak you're not going to do well in this class mm-hmm. so then it's interesting how like that I feel like made the reason why that there's this inequality with the numbers just because there's so many more guys than the girls and then from the first class and then a week later all the girls dropped except for me so I was the only girl left in that class so I was like what does this say like is does this have anything to do with the class or is it just like they're intimidated by these guys like so I was so then I had to like stick out the entire term with like the guys and it was like an economics class So it was really tough, like, because I feel like there's this idea that, like, if women speak their mind, if they're being, like, like, they shouldn't speak their mind, but guys are okay to speak their mind. So it's really interesting when um, we're forced to be in this position where I have to speak my mind. I feel kind of like it's hard for me to speak up, but then I'm, like, forcing myself to versus I always wanted to ask the guys, like, do you feel like you're being forced to speak because, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean it is interesting because, like we said, like all of the assessments. Well, I don't say all. Many of the assessments are not, at least they're not intended to be gender biased. Whether they are or not is probably conversation for another podcast. But um, so our prior assessment, anyone can be, you know, prioritized relationships or prioritized time or prioritized logic or prioritize our intuition. Um, and then when you think of Myers-Briggs, right, anyone can be introverted, anyone can be extroverted, but it is interesting when you're saying that, like, A, the women dropped out, or the, the young women dropped out, and B, right, what was it? Was it the fact that, because it was the same description, like, you will need to participate in order to pass the class? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, there's also, like, people ask around for, like, what kind, like what the style of the professor is like. So then there was one class, like there was two classes being offered. One was the class I was in, which is very discussion based, like 40% of your grade was discussion, just like that. And the other class was like group project based. And then I found it interesting because people dropped my class to move into the other class. And like the term later, I like took another econ class, but it was not like discussion based. And then it was much more even, like the girls and boys were really even. I feel like like going off of what you said, when women sit there and speak their mind, I feel like there's always that fear of being labeled as like, like oh, she's really aggressive when she's speaking. But it could be the fact that you're very dominant and you just know like what you want to say and you're confident in your voice. And I feel like a lot of people, or men specifically, are intimidated by that. And so then there comes in the labels of, Like, oh, she's a know-it-all, or she's this, or, like, and so it's kind of, like, a lot, I feel like a lot of people don't want to put up with that, and they don't, aren't willing to be labeled as, like, a certain, like, stereotype, and so I feel like they're just kind of, like, you know what, like, I'm going to take a step back, and, like, I'd rather just stay quiet, Mm -hmm. and they can take, like, the reins. Yeah. I find it interesting that that's, like, an economics class that does it, because I feel like a lot of classes like for me we had a classics I was in a classic class and it was mainly based off of Greek classics and in that class it was actually there was one girl there was mainly there was like girls that spoke out a lot more and they, of course there are guys in the class but even in discussions it, they're a bit they don't talk too much which is interesting because it was a class that was heavily based on like we talk about what we read and like we break out into small we once a week we meet into smaller groups to discuss what we read but in those classes mainly 
girls that were talking. The guys are just there, of course, to participate to get the necessary points, but no one actively raised their hands. But uh, so I'm thinking, like, maybe it's interesting that, like, is it the field that makes it different? Like, guys don't really read a lot of, like, Greek mythology. Or are, is that, like, a stigma behind that or just, like, difference? Because that that is a class that's supposed to be discussion-oriented. Mm. But, yeah. Mm. It's interesting. I think, I mean, I was an English major, so there was a lot of reading, um, and we didn't do as much. It depended on the class, right, whether, I mean, and, and now you're testing my memory. But I think... <laughs> Speaking as a facilitator, like leading groups, it's interesting to see like how people participate, right? And I tend to say this, I've told you all this before, like when I facilitate, I always tell them at the beginning, like this is not me standing at you talking for however long this program is, is that I'm going to ask questions and I'm going to I'm going to pose things. And I always tell them too, if something I say or I'm sharing and the content doesn't make sense, like I invite them to, you know, challenge or, you know, share their perspective. And it's interesting, I think sometimes people don't believe me, right? So then I ask the first question and we get complete and total silence. And I'm like, I told you I was going to ask questions. And then people start to warm up. But um, I think... It is interesting, and I can't, and I don't have any data right now to say men versus women speak up more than others. Um, but I think I thought what you said was interesting, Samaya, around this like choosing to be quiet instead of choosing to speak. Have any of you had that experience where you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna not say anything, even though I may want to say something? All the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> I feel like I've got as older like as like I feel like with time I've learned that people aren't ready to hear like what you have to say and so I'm not gonna sit here and like waste my time or my breath for people who aren't like willing to hear what like Mm -hmm. I have to say I feel like my voice matters and I feel like my time is very like important to me and so if you're not willing to give me that space or hold space for me to speak that I'm not willing to share my thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so, and it really depends on, I guess, like the surroundings that I am in. And so, for instance, like if we're talking about like class discussions and it gets to like very like heavy topics on like privilege and power and identity. And it's just like, you kind of like scan the room and look at the demographics and everything. And you kind of just sit here and you're like, okay, like if I sit here and I speak my truth and like, I spit some real stuff, like, are people willing, are they going to be willing to listen, are they going to be willing to, like, intake the information, have, like, a wholesome discussion with me, or are they, is it going to go in one ear and out the other, and so, I guess, in a sense, like, and it hurts, though, like, when you sit here and you do speak your truth, and every, like, you get that reaction where it's just, like, crickets, Mm -hmm. and so, I feel like, for me, I've become very conscious of, like, scanning the room, and like asking myself, like, are these people like willing to hold space for me? Yeah, I think definitely, especially like through high school and then going to college, like I really value a real discussion because a lot of times when a discussion happens or a debate happens, sometimes people aren't really willing to listen. And if that's the case, then that's not going to be a real debate. And I don't want that. Like, I really learned to value, like, will this person actually? Even if I don't, they don't have to agree with me. We don't, we can be completely different sides, or I can be taking the devil's advocate and talking about a side that maybe I don't agree with. But are they willing to acknowledge that and take that into consideration with their argument or not? And I think true to what Samaya said, if they're not, then I'll draw my point. And if I see that they're not going to take it, they're just going to keep pushing their side without even acknowledging. Then that's not really worth the time. They're not going to change anyways. Sometimes in classes, I feel like the way that the facilitator or the teacher structures the discussion is really important because um, I feel like when the professor, like, makes it a point that you have to talk, like, if you don't talk, like, I'm grading you if if you're talking. And that's when I feel like people are talking just to talk and then they don't listen which I really like, it's frustrating when you're in a discussion and I put out a point, but somebody who responds isn't responding directly about my point. 
they're just tagging along mm. in, like tagging along to my point and then like making their own point without really connecting to what I just said because they're not really listening they're just finding an opportunity to just butt into the conversation so that they can get that point so I feel like it really to get like a good meaningful conversation it really depends on how the facilitator sets up the discussion and a meaningful discussion is much more memorable than just something for points mm -hmm. yeah yeah. yeah, and it's funny that you say that as facilitator because I do have that role and sometimes there is that challenge, I mean there's so many things because you're managing the room, you're managing the time, you're managing the content. One of my challenges sometimes is calling on someone who hasn't contributed because I can see, in, you know, you could see in the room like, okay, like these people are going to talk no matter what. And, and then you'll hear that one person that's got like a really good point, but they're only going to say it when they've got something to say. And then there are people that don't talk. And so it's like, how do you bring people into the discussion? But I also don't like to make people feel like they're on the spot. So sometimes that's my challenge of like being like, oh, you know, so Maya, what do you have to say? And you haven't said anything all day, but it's kind of like, because we want, I want to hear like the point as an example, like, but doing that sometimes can make people feel uncomfortable if they haven't contributed. So for me, that's, that's a challenge as a facilitator because I want that diversity. I want that conversation to be rich. And yet it's right, like how to kind of balance the, 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 I'm saying like the high talkers and the low talkers, but you know, like sort of like the people that talk, speak often versus the people who don't don't speak as much. But I never presume that that means that they don't have an opinion. It just means maybe they have different levels of comfort, like maybe contributing in that setting. I speaking on that. So um, I was basically in a class and we were doing an activity, and our professor was basically like, okay this is very discussion based but the challenge is like everyone in the room can only speak like three times and so being someone like who's very like opinionated and I like to talk a lot I was just like okay like I only get three chances to talk so I have to make it count mm -hmm. and so I'm like if I'm going to talk three times it's like three valid points and everything and then that like also forced the people who like didn't speak or who usually don't speak and their voices are kind of like hidden to kind of like go out there and like state their stuff. And it was really interesting though because the way it went about was like all the very quiet like introverted people were the ones to speak first. And then like everyone who usually like dominates the conversation were like the ones that were like very calculated on like what they were going to say. And so I thought that was a really like great engagement tool to get everyone in the class to be engaged in the discussion and to have like an equal voice because no one dominated the conversation because everyone got equal opportunity and like an equal amount of number of times to talk. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Sometimes what I'll do for certain things, like I'll ask, but I'll say up front, like, okay, we're going to hear from everyone on this. And then I'll say who would like to start. And then we kind of do it like a round robin from there. But I always try to give the heads up of like, okay, I want, I want everyone to contribute to this particular point. So that, again, hopefully you know. And then it's like, okay, the first person to raise their hand. And then like we sort of do like a circle around from there. Yeah. I think like from the perspective of someone that's like not a facilitator but like an introverted person in a discussion, a lot of times when I hear that, I either have the reaction of, I'll speak early, especially if I know, if I have, if it's a topic that I'm passionate about and I have, I know I have my opinion, then I don't want it to get lost and I also just want to get it done with. So uh, then I'll speak earlier. But then sometimes if it's something that I know will be a good discussion, then I do want to wait and see, like I want to hear what everyone has to say. I want to hear their opinion speak later. But I think a lot of times introverted people tend to just speak first because they're just like, okay, I have to speak anyways. <laughs> well, just let's do it now. That's interesting. Yeah. Do we? Do you think that being, because um, I know we have introverts in the rooms or some at least, is that is that the same in group or how about because we started the conversation, Candace, you asked originally about like setting priorities and boundaries, and so I'm thinking we've talked a lot about group. What about individually or one-on-one? -on -one? 
do you see similar challenges or do you feel more comfortable speaking up? One on one is definitely for me personally a bit a bit more comfortable because when I'm in a group I like to kind of analyze and see where people lie just so like either I don't offend someone or I'll know how they'll take a discussion but I think so one on one is definitely more comfortable and it's a bit more I can open myself up but I do still tend to either wait and see like oh does this person have more to say where do they want to take the discussion I kind of like wait for them and see where they want to lead it and then I'll follow a lot more times I tend to take that route I'm kind of the opposite where I feel like it's a lot easier for me when it comes to like groups because I'm mm-hmm. like really good I feel like at reading the room and meeting people versus when it's like one-to-one or like with myself I feel like it's really hard for me to sit there and like be vulnerable and like be honest and it's just like to have like you have to there, there's like a sense of willingness that comes with that and so I feel very like uncomfortable with someone like getting to know me like on that level I feel like by myself yeah like of course like everyone tends to like get to know themselves you go through that process and everything but like expressing my like priorities and needs to just like one person I feel like it's really like putting me on the spot and so like I tend to stutter more and I'm just like I don't know and then I just go like mute mm-hmm. so. for me like I took the the personality test and then I always found it interesting because I couldn't really determine if I was extroverted or introverted because I feel like that changes depend on the scenario I'm in so I find myself when I'm around introverted people, I tend to be more extroverted because I want to get to know people more and I understand that it's hard for them to open up. So I put myself in this position where I'm like, I have to speak more to give them an opportunity for them to open up to me a little bit more. And then I find it really interesting with um, interacting with different personalities because I find that their personalities change after getting to know you too. So I find with a lot of my friends, like, When I first met them, they seemed really introverted, but when you get to know them more and then you really establish this bond, they become the most extroverted people I know. And it's interesting that they show these two different sides and you can only see that side if you like get to know them and take the time to get to know them. Yeah, I think that's that's with me. (laughs) I'm the opposite. So Mm -hmm. like when you first get to know me, it seems like I'm super extroverted and everything. And that's just because like, I really love to make people feel comfortable. So if I'm in a room, I'm just like, okay, like, hey, like, who are you? What do you do? And so I'm, like, so willing to speak to them and everything. And I'm, like, a little chatterbug. And then, like, the second you get me, like, alone, it's just, like, that's where my introverted side comes out. And I'm just like, okay, like, I'm going to go quiet. (laughs) Let me find my corner. (laughs) So tomorrow I'll be, like, where'd she go? Yeah. I think, yeah, for me, I do follow that where it's, like, when I'm, especially if it's like a group or a couple people, at first when I meet someone, it's kind of like talking is uncomfortable. So I tend to do it more through action. Like I'll try and like if they sit down, like I'll always try and like let them sit or come for an open door. Like I'll try and do action first to get them to warm up to me and like know that I'm an open person, even though I can't because I know it's hard for me to speak. So I'd rather just like show them that I am open to becoming closer. I just can't talk right now. <laughs> and then when they're close, especially that's why. I, I said I'm more comfortable with like one-on-one because I really value one-on-one discussion because I think it does leave me vulnerable but that's when I truly get to know someone is through being vulnerable I really value being vulnerable with someone like if I am able to be vulnerable and that person is able to be vulnerable back that's like where true connection happens so after that then I am a bit like I get a lot more active when I'm with that person once I've reached that level yeah Hey, did you hear us talking about something called priosis? Did you wonder what that is? Well, priosis is an assessment. It helps you to clarify your priorities, basically to figure out what's important to you and to better understand how knowing your priorities helps you to relate better with others. Is that something you'd like to do? Well, visit startwithincoaching.com 
and click Book Online at the top of the screen. You'll see two options to book a coaching session with me using the Priosis Assessment. You'll get a chance to take the Priority Calculator and then we'll talk about what do your scores mean and how does it impact your relationship with others. So visit startwithincoaching.com, click Book Online. I can't wait to have a Priosis coaching session with you. So, based on what we discussed today, what steps can we take to prioritize ourselves while also maintaining our relationships? Prioritize yourself. Well, I think it, it, it goes back to what I was saying before about knowing what it is that you want, being clear about your priorities, and in essence, like I said, giving yourself permission to do it, right, regardless of what what you might perceive to be like quote consequences right so that because and off, often it's there's a fear attached to it and often that fear isn't real right so oh i'm going to say this and this person's not going to like me or i'm going to do this and this person's going to stop speaking to me and in some cases if it does happen right then you've also learned something about that other person so now you get the, to make the choice of is this someone or are these people that i want to have in my life like I feel like we make choices based on fear of other people's perceptions and reactions when in reality we need to elevate our own so I know that sometimes it might not be easy to do in the beginning but sort of starting in small steps really being like okay like today what's my most what's the most important thing that I want to get done today and making that a priority and then honoring that priority and and who do I need who else needs to know that this is a priority for me right it may not be blasting it to the whole world but maybe there's one person that needs to know okay today I'm gonna meditate um, before I go to work so is there anyone else that needs to know that in order for me to feel comfortable with doing that right because sometimes we feel like oh if I start making changes or if I start doing di things differently people are gonna look at me differently right but it really is about prioritizing your needs, your want, wants, your desires. What do you all think? Yeah, I think like that's the hardest part is like knowing that I should actually make my priori priorities clear and taking that step to do that because a lot of times I think I'm kind of like looking out for other people's by keeping my priority to myself and then taking care of them. And if they prioritize something, then letting them have it. I think like, oh, you know, I'm... That's how I want to do. I want them to feel comfortable. But a lot of times, especially there's situations like be it roommates or sweetmate living with other people or friends, it's important for me to make my priorities clear. So in the future, when we plan things out, they know my priorities and there's no struggles, no fights later. But a lot of times I find myself thinking, like limiting myself and holding them back because I think, oh, I want them to know they have their priorities, but that can also be harmful later end. I feel like the first step is that self reflection and kind of asking yourself like because earlier I spoke on like burnout and so when you are at that point of like you're at that burnout point and you got to sit there and stop and be like okay like what got me to this point and so realizing the fact that if you continuously keep giving your energy and time to people you yourself like eventually you're only going to be able to give them like 50 percent you're not going to be able to give them like your best version mm -hmm. and you're not going to be able to give yourself like the best version so kind of stopping and asking yourself like what do i need to be 100 percent again and then being very intentional from that point and saying okay like you know what like sundays are for me Sundays I'm going to take that time to like either go shopping or read a book or catch up on that Netflix series. It's just kind of like what your version of like self-care is and being very intentional to keep up with that and then letting your loved ones or the, the people like in your life know like, hey, I'll be there for you like six days out of that week, but this seventh day like is for me. So respect me and love me enough to give me like that space to do what I got to do.
I feel like what you just said like sparks like the word like communication is super important mm. like being able to communicate like your priorities but also being able to be vulnerable with the people that you're interacting with because with communication comes a sense of vulnerability like I'm telling you something and like you're getting to know me with everything I'm telling you and I feel like it's harder for certain people to be more vulnerable with people that they, they don't know so that like stops them from being able to effectively communicate like what they need in order to like like make themselves feel like they're prioritizing themselves and also respecting the other person. It's so important and, and what you were saying about the self-reflection, it's also realizing or recognizing when when did I start giving away aspects of my power or when did I stop prioritizing myself? And I always think that those self-reflection conversations, doing them without judgment, doing them without guilt, doing them without shame, right? Like not shaming yourself, being like, okay, this is this is where I am right now. And and just being like I often say, like it's like a you're like a mindfulness or a personal growth detective. Like, how how did I get here? Right? How did this actually happen? And asking those questions of yourself lovingly. Um, and, and, you know, either journaling or, or seeing how the answers come up for you. And then, because the more you become aware of it, then you start to become, you, you become aware of it internally, and then you start to become more aware of it externally. So then the next time someone asks for something or asks you to do something, it's kind of like, oh, wait, right, the last time I said yes when I meant no, this is what happened. Okay, I don't want that again. And then you can make a different choice. But it is that, and recognizing that it may not be perfect, right? Like we're not going to get it right every time, all the time, every day, but just starting to become aware of, okay, like when, 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 when I did that, I got to 50% because I was just totally burnt out, right? So like, if I don't want to be burnt out again, how do I, how do I protect myself from, from that situation? I definitely think that it's about, like when I give advice to other people, like that self-reflection is so important because I give advice to people that like my friends that have similar personalities to me. So I know that internally I know those steps. I know what I have to do to make sure I don't burn out and to make sure my priorities are clear because I, I give that advice to my friends. But then I always have trouble applying it to myself because for some reason it's I tell them, oh, you have to do, you, like you have to make sure that like don't get stepped on, make sure people know your priorities so they don't. So you don't get hurt and they don't get hurt because you need to understand each other. But because that's from personal experience, like I don't want them to be in the situation I am in now. But I always fail to apply it to myself. So really that self-reflection of, oh, how can I apply it to myself? And I really do need to apply it to myself is really important. Cool. I'm really glad that we had these conversations today. It's really um refreshing to hear everyone's perspective. I feel like I've gotten to know each of you a little bit more and uh, am enjoying the experience of working with you. And for everyone else who's listening, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation from Team Start Within Coaching. We're going to be doing at least a couple more of these episodes. So please tune in. And until then, remember, this is Coach Colette helping you to start within to finish strong.